and I will also be coming back to some of these theory uh, and concepts. So to start off a general note relating to weaknesses. Um, Michael, just a question, are we recording? Yes, I have just started recording now. Okay, thank you. All right. Um, most of you know, when we talk about weaknesses at this stage, a weakness or a weak point in chess would be defined as a square or a pawn which is not protected by another pawn. So weak squares in chess would constitute ideal positions for chess pieces. As part of your game plan, the big challenge for you is to decide what is my best move. So in response to, to the position, you would then be looking for the weaknesses in your opponent's position, and you would be targeting those weak squares. The weaknesses in your opponent's position are then the identifiable attacking points. If there are no weak squares in your opponent's position, you're going to aim to try and provoke weak squares and to try and occupy them with your own pieces. So with reference to our topic for today, we know that the, the king is the ultimate target in chess. But what is going to happen when you find that the king is in a castle position, there are no open files, etc. How are we going to go about with this game plan? How are we going to go about getting this breakthrough that we so much need? How are we going to exploit any weaknesses in the castle position for an attack on the king? So that is the type of situation that we will be looking at today. So as well as the king or unprotected pieces, we also find that pawns can be also be objects to be attacked. And therefore, we need to look for a weak point or a weak pawn in the opponent's position and attack it. So those are just some general points that I'm highlighting relating to weaknesses. So when it comes to attacking weaknesses, you need to realize that even though a direct attack does not always mean the gain of a pawn. An attack, however, does present you with certain advantages. Because if you are attacking, then your opponent has to be defending and is often forced to put pieces into passive positions. And when your opponent is defending, and you have that attack going, the next step for you is to employ other pieces and to reinforce the attack, to add more pressure. What is going to make the situation worse for your opponent is that you're not only attacking one weakness, but when you suddenly come up and you provoke a second weakness or a third weakness for that matter, and then you end up stretching your opponent as far as his defense is concerned, because he's battling to defend the various weaknesses in his position. As I mentioned at the start, we said that we're going to be talking about opposition weaknesses are, and we're going to be looking at open files. Charlton? Okay, thank you. So just with reference to combinations involving files, and this we will then see happening within, our, uh, within the games that we're going to be evaluating. By now we know that rooks need open files to be effective and, and rooks themselves, they thrive on, thrive on activity. So the strategic goal of any line opening Line openings, um, the line pieces are often referred to as the bishop, the queen, and the rook. So the strategic goal of any line opening consists of the penetration into the opposing camp via the seventh or the eighth rank. 
an open or semi-open file leading towards a castle position can become a decisive factor which powerfully supports and speeds up our attack. Okay, so those are just some general points, notes that I'm going to come back to with reference to, to our topic at hand. All right. I trust that you guys can actually see the, the screen, um, the board that on display. We can, yes. Okay, thank you. All right, so we're gonna be looking at, um, at a number of games um, for, for the time that we are together. So the first game that I'm gonna be looking at is a game between Beliavsky and Bariv, where um, White played, and I'm going to be White actually won the game, but I will be uh, I will be moving pretty fast in order to get to a certain to a certain position. All right. So starting off with the current position that we're having at the end. Um, I'm going to ask, um, am I saying your name correctly, Garayant? Um, I'm going to ask you if, if you're playing white, what would your, just looking at the position, what would your, your next position be, your, your next move be for white? Uh, to take the rook on g8. You would want to take the rook on g8. Okay. Um, let's see who else is there that we can ask. Waylon? Any suggestion from your side, Waylon? Rook takes G8. Okay, so you're saying the same as Karayan. All right, but if we look at the current position, guys, and this is the CCT process, checks, capture, stretch process that we do with each and every move, you're gonna, you obviously going to tell me that White is in a stronger position is due to the fact that he's got the doubling up of the rooks. So now, what we're going to try to do is to provoke weaknesses, as I mentioned in, in the initial theory. So White's first move, you do not want to give the advantage to Black. If, you, if you're going to take, then he's going to be forced to take with his knight on g8. But the follow through, so you have this vision in mind, the knight on e5, which square would you like that knight to get to in, and be attacking Black? Uh, F7. F7, correct. So the first move would be we're going to go bishop to H5. Okay. We're going to go bishop H5. If in here you are inviting black to take the bishop on H5 after which you're going to you're going to exchange on G8 and checkmate the king. If he does not take the bishop on h5, then definitely the knight on f7, the check there is a, is a possibility which will force the queen to take the knight. Otherwise, it's going to be checkmate. Okay, you see that, Karayan? So here we are evaluating the g file. Our first few games, we're going to be looking at, at the g file where white uses a lovely tactical trick to bring into the attack, not only the bishop, but also his queen. Okay, so we're also going to be looking later on at the H file and the F file, and then we will look at games involving more than one file. So the response is queen to F8, 
and now you exchange rook takes and force to take with a knight. Okay. Would it be wise for you to be Wayland to be playing knight f7? Is that going to help you? No, sir. The rook can take. Absolutely. You'll just be getting five points for the six points. And furthermore, you're going to see that that black is now getting rid of two of white's um, most attacking pieces. So the next one is queen to g3. All right. There's more than one threat about to happen there because not only are you now placing pressure on the g8 square, but there is also the possibility you would want to go queen h4 and then also move your knight to g6 and to have a discovered attack. All right, so those are long term goals. Okay, so let's look, let's look how um, what the response was bishop to b5 and definitely queen h4. Queen h4. So Compare this to a few moves back. Okay, four moves ago, the position was not so threatening, but now you can actually see that black cannot stand up to the coordinated attack by his opponent because white is preparing the deadly check on g6. Okay. Black responds, knight to f6. And now, look at the next move, bishop f7. Following this move, black resigned. Karayan, can you tell me now what, what are the main threats for white following that move? Uh, knight c6 check. My g6 check, yes. Okay, give me another another threat as well, Waylon. If black leaves the bishop, then queen takes f6 check. Yes. And, um, uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> So if queen takes f6 check, you're removing the defender of g8. So the rook g8 then also becomes a possibility. You guys agree with me? Yes. So if rook takes f7 now, then you're gonna go knight g6 check and then the black queen is lost. So let's just see what's gonna happen there. Rook takes f7, knight g6 check, king to g8. Knight takes the queen, king takes, and then you come in with queen h6. And black is completely lost. Okay, any questions regarding this, this game? Any questions or comments? Okay, so before I go back to the theory, we're going to look at the second game, which is also related to the G file. So in this game, you can actually see how white uses a G file. He, he opens up the G file for a rapid attack. Just offhand, would you say is better off at this stage, white or black? White. White, certainly. If you look at the focus point, remember, um, I mentioned it in previous coaching sessions that we need to locate the king. We need to keep our eyes fixed on, on the enemy king because ultimately that is good to win the game you find that four queen side so they are actually offside white on the other end 
He has certainly lo located the, the Black King. He's targeting it. He's got this semi-open file. And look at how his bishops are pointed already with the arrows here. Bishops are pointed like missiles already. Okay, so he's already uh, got a pin going on G7. And yeah, I think we can expect Bishop H6 would be an immediate um, move that we would be thinking of. All right. At the same time, you see that, that white has got the tension, he's keeping the tension here on D5. So he's inviting black to take the pawn on D5 so that he can jump in with his knight to D5. And then also the knight can join the attack. All right. So instead of playing bishop h6, white's first aim is to go bishop h5. <clears throat> okay. Um, Waylon, why would you think Bishop H5? Um, because um, b um, the knight on E8 is protecting the G7 square. Very good. G7. Okay, so he's aiming to remove a key defender. Excellent. All right, so black responded rook to D8. And now the second bishop goes. So now certainly the next threat is bishop takes e8 and then the g7 pawn pawn will fall. Okay, so black goes rook to d7. The defender is still removed. Bishop takes e8 and rook takes. And now that the bishop on h5 is no longer there, it opens up the square for the queen. Okay, so there is a sustained attack. Once again, we find an attack going on e8, but there is more to follow. There is a bigger plan as well. Black moves queen back to b8. The queen now suddenly uh, wants to become part of the game, but it is much too late. All right. For white is, all right, Grant, Grant, Talk to me, why did white choose to make that sacrifice? Bishop takes g7. Is there a possible combination that you see there? If black ever takes the uh, rook takes and white will bring his other queen, um, other rook into the game. All right, so okay, so you're looking at at the rook on b1 coming to g1 to check it. Okay. All right. I see your note here, um, Ryan, that your, your internet is lagging. Okay. That's correct. Um, bishop takes. So if rook takes, then rook takes there. King takes. And the other rook comes in with g1 check. King goes to f8. Or if the king went to h8, then the queen will go to f7. If the king went to h8, the king will go to f7. Queen goes to f7 there. And there's F definitely the checkmate threat there. Okay. Um, f6 is being attacked and there's a threat on g7. If king on f8, uh, if king goes to f8, what did we say there? Um, queen will definitely take on h7. So there's also bigger threats there. All right. Guys, um, if I look at this game and the previous game, if I, I'm just going to just, you just pause and, and, and refer back to the theory.
you see that we were attacking the G file now. Um, was there an open file to be effective? And were the rooks driving an activity? Definitely answer will be yes. Was the penetration of the seventh or eighth rank? Um, at this stage, not, not really, okay? But there was an open or semi-open file, but what was important is the support of the other pieces. What was, what was important is that the opponent was stretched. Um, his, his pieces were offside and the clear weaknesses in this position. Um, the opponent's pieces being offside, so the opposite side was being attacked and that in itself was a great weakness. The king wasn't even being defended properly. Okay, what you also see was the fact that there was identifiable attacking points and there was co um, a coordination between the pieces. I think what you also saw there was that the opponent's pieces were not offside, but in many time, in many cases, he had to. Okay, so I'm just going to go back to to our next game. Okay, the third game that we're going to be looking at this game and the following game, we are going to be attacking the H file. Right? Remember the previous game was the G file. So if you if you um, previously had a consideration, um, you perhaps had coaching lessons related to wedge pawns, wedge pawns would, would be talking about the FG and H pawns. And those are the three pawns that are most times common when we're, you know, to, to defend the king when players are castling uh, on the king side. And that's the reason why we are looking at particularly at these three pawns. You could actually apply the same scenario to the A, B, and C pawns as well, should it be a queen side. Um, Castling situation. All right. In this case, for the H file, you'd actually see that the H file is often opened if the opponent tries to fianchetto to his bishop. Fianchetto basically on the angle whether it is b2, b7, g2, or g7. Okay, so situations where the players have castled on different sides are particularly dangerous because in most cases, the rook is still on h1 and can take advantage of the line opening. Okay, as I, as I mentioned there, pawn wedges, we talk about the fg and h pawns. All right, so... The player playing uh, playing black was Taimanov, and he was playing against Karpov, the former world champion Anatoly Karpov. And here you see that Taimanov prepared a surprise attack. Okay, black to play, and black's first move move is queen to d4. If you look at this current position, who, who would you say is better off, white or black, or are they equal? Brian? Would you say the position is equal? Or would you say that black or white is better off?
Oh, like I think it's equal, but I would prefer white because he's a pawn. Because of the past pawn. Uh, yes. Oh, he's a pawn up. Okay, and you're looking at the B pawn that has already or, uh, advanced into black's territory. All right. White's also got a uh, black's also got the pass pawn on e5, but it is not so far advanced. All right. So at this stage, yes, you are right. You're saying it's equal, but let's look at the plans. Why queen d4? Waylon, what do you see happening there after the queen d4 moves? What are the possibilities? Uh, rook a1. Rook a1 is a definite threat, yes. Yeah. Okay, I think that is that is the strongest threat at the stage. So white continued and he played d6, and here comes Wayland's move, rook a1. Black retreated his knight to b1. Now the next move is a complete surprising move. Knight to g3. And I can tell you after knight to g3, white resigned. All right, I need somebody to talk me through this. If white takes with the pawn and rook a8, and there's not, there's no way to stay to stop mate. Okay, so he's gonna go back rook to a8, correct? So if h takes g3, then rook a8. And rook. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, he, if he had to, if he had to take with a queen, if he takes queen yes. takes g3, then he loses the the rook. Okay. Um, and the king certainly could not go back to g1 because of queen on d4. All right. Thanks for that, Waylon. Okay, so that day, guys, you saw was uh, certainly um, rook a8, and then yeah, you're looking at a back rank checkmate, although it's on the side. Okay. So there's nothing that he can do to, 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 to stop the checkmate. All right, let's look at the next game. Okay. Um, in this game also, we are focusing on the H file. Looking at the position, you'll see that white has the bishop pair and with his knight, um, black as both knights. Okay. Um, first move for white. Once again, it's the attack on, on the H file. It doesn't even look like there's no open H file at this stage, but there is there's quite a, a pawn advance that is happening, a pawn storm that has happened. Yes, the bishops are pointing in, in that direction. So now you've got to work, work out the combinations carefully. Okay. And the first move for white in this stage, uh, uh, in this game, is a sacrifice. Okay. Queen takes h7. Um, is, has white gone crazy? Why? Why do you want to give off your queen for a pawn? When looking at this position, this, it's not that it's going to be checkmate with the next move. So why would we want to be doing that at all? Okay. Remember, we said in the past that when there's a sacrifice, it must be based upon the fact that you already have some follow-up moves that, um, that, you, that you have considered. And that you also need to make sure that your sacrifice is going to work. Okay, so queen takes h7, black is obviously forced to take back. Next move is, Mumtaz, what's the next move for white?
You can also type your answer if, uh, for us if you want to. The black has taken the, the queen back on h7. Okay, Waylon, is there any better move other than g6? No, sir. There's no better move. All right. So the any other move? Yeah, any other move would, would not work. The king cannot come to h6. So the king has to go back to h8. And now, Grant, why does white play rook to g5? Uh, to check my uh, black on h5, and if black takes, then he takes back and it's checkmate along the Also H5. checkmate, correct. All right, so if we're going to have that happening, there's your checkmate there. Um, Alternatively, any other move than the rook is going to go to h5 checkmate. Okay. Um, let's just see. I think I. Okay, that was the game that we had now. Okay. Yes. Sir. Yes. Sir. Yes. Say that again. Why not? Can you hide the moves? Um, all right. I. If you guys can tell me how to hide it, then 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 then, then I'll certainly will hide it. Yeah, maybe Michael? just turn the engine off. There might be the easiest. That little switch to the right there. Yeah. And then for the moves, like if it's not set up like that, you can just like open up the menu or something when you're, there's a menu button in the bottom right. If you're asking for people to guess the move, you can just click that and that'll hide the notation. Okay, I've, I've opened up here. Uh, I've clicked on the menu. Yeah, that'll... Inline notation, enabling. Yeah, that's just if you want to hide the notation temporarily, you can just click that and then click the menu button to go back to your notation. It needs to be set up differently to have the moves hidden. Okay, so so if I if must I must I leave it on 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 now as it is there. Yeah, you can just leave it like that and move the pieces, or if you need to go back to the notation, you can just click that again. Okay. All right. Thanks. Thanks, Michael. Okay, guys. The, the 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 next the next game that we're looking at now is we're looking at at the F file. Okay. So looking at this position, who is better off, white or black? Black. 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 Okay. And. Is it because of the semi-open file here? Yeah, it's because of the semi-open file and black pieces is more active than white. Definitely. Thanks for that, Wayland, because you've got the offside king. Your white school, oh, offside queen rook for white. Okay, um, coming back to black's first move. I need I need a suggested move for black. What's the first move that you suggest? Grain, would you want to try? Uh, maybe a uh, queen a five. Queen F5. Okay, Wayland. Oh, so all but them. I don't know about the second on F, on F two, taking F two. 
king takes. You're suggesting the sacrifice. Okay. Now you are correct with that. It is a sacrifice. And then king takes. And then? H, queen h2. Queen h2. Oh, wait, wait. Yeah, queen h2. Yeah. So then the king has to come back to f1, eh? Oh, no. yeah. All right. The rook, and then? Rook e, rook e6. Rook e6. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Um, I yes, probably sir. will go go all the way back to e8. Okay, e or yeah. e7. Yeah. yeah. So you're threatening the rook f7 checkmate. Ach, yeah, yes, sir. Check. Yeah, checkmate then. Um, white white basically has only one move left in which to defend. So, Grant, which move are we uh, which move are we thinking of for white? Which is also not the best move. It's actually a hopeless move, but there's nothing much you can do. Uh, queen f5. Correct. Okay. But now, why I said it's not the best move? Because it is now obvious that black is going to play what move, Grain? Uh, uh, rook f7. Correct. And there you have your skewer. Okay, so why to play? He could he could take now immediately, but chose to play queen f4 so that he can connect his pawns. Black is patient, played h5. There's no need for him to rush to play. And why play h h5? What's his plan now? After taking the queen, what 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 is what's his intention? To create the pass pawn. Correct. Which will be the G pawn, eh? Okay, so the queen takes, king takes. And at that stage, that's where that's where um, White resigned because in following up now the next move is it's going to be H4. If G takes H4, then he's going to play G3. All right. Let's look at the next uh, next position. Once again, it's the F file. And we see that the F file is more frequently opened in symmetrical positions. It also offers many different tactical possibilities. Okay. If we look at this current position, would you agree with me that, that this is a, a, an equal position? Or does any side hold a clear advantage? If we if we look if we see a, a, a completely open file, we already see that black is controlling it. The A file. You guys agree with me that the, the, that the position is equal? No, sir. Okay. So now you'll see that white does have a pawn advantage. White wants to attack, but going. And he's got his bishop defending the g7 square. Okay. But what, what is very important is that if you look at both rooks on the d and the f1 squares, they can already do what I would call a rook lift. Those rooks can be moved up to the to the third rank and switched across to the H or the G file. Okay. So first move for white. You have a tight position here, so you need to somehow open up 
the causal break down the causal position. One of the functions of, of, of pawns are that they are very good at attacking and breaking down the enemy defenses. So I'm looking for a suggested first move for, for white. Uh, F5. You say F5. Anybody else? Muntaz, are you ready to give a, 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 us an answer? You may suggest a move for us. No move, no answer is the wrong answer. Good evening, Takutswa. Hi, Andrew, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. Takutswa, please suggest a move for me, for white. Um, Queen H4. All right. I, I've oh, rook, F5. rook F3, rook F3 also. I've got queen H4, F5, rook F3. Okay. I'm thinking of a sacrifice. I'm thinking, I'm thinking of, of, of a sacrifice with some follow-up plans. All right. So let's look at what white suggests, what white planned to do. And that was G6. Now, is White lost his, his bananas here because he's not giving away a free pawn. And then he's also going to decide, is Black going to take with the H pawn or with the, with the F pawn? Certainly, if he wants to keep his king protected, he's going to take with the F pawn. Am I right? So now that that pawn is being pushed from G5, what are the op other possibilities open for you? Those are the things we need to consider. If black takes with the F pawn, do you guys see that the knight can go to G5, threatening the H7 square, but can also then go to E6 and have a strong outpost? Everybody see that? Yes, sir. And yes. That is and that is the whole reasoning behind the G6 move, behind the sacrifice of that pawn. So he takes there and now comes a further move. All right. Black's not in a hurry to move his knight to G5. He also wants to activate the rook on the F file. So F5 goes and takes and takes with the rook. White has just actually made three moves now. And look how the position has suddenly changed. I want you to see that even here, there's an attack going on, on, on the D6 square. Okay, the queen and the, and the, the knight are both attacking D6. All right, so, there are, so you can certainly get that pawn back there again, but now suddenly you've got, you've got freedom for your pieces. You've got activity going. That fortress is, is already not so much a fortress anymore. There's also the chance that the rook on D1 can come to the F1 square and you can have doubling up of the rooks happening. Okay? So let's see now Black's next move, desperately wanting to reinforce his defense. So he retreats the knight. The knight we can see it is headed either to, to F6 or to E5. Next move for white, as I predicted, doubling up of the rooks. Okay, let's take it a bit further. What is Black supposed to be doing in, at this stage? I want you to see, look at that queen side rook there, the rook on A8 and the bishop on B7. 
also the queen on, on b4. If you total them, there are 17 points that could be off the board. 17 points that are useless. They're not even defending at the moment. Look at white's pieces. Other than the knight on c3, the rest of his pieces are all on the king's side. I'm busy attacking. Okay, you guys see where I'm going with this. All right. And that a file rook that was initially open, Black has not been able to, to utilize that open file rook to his advantage. And now you have activity going on the king side. And those pieces that are that have identified for black, they are not even near to defending on black's king side. All right, so knight went to e5. The rook comes back to f4. And the queen now hurries back to b6 to try and eventually come into and become part of the defense. So the rerouting of the queen is an additional two or three moves that's going to happen. And there's the knight to g5 move coming, threatening e6 and also attacking h7. So you guys can actually see that they there could even be a sacrifice being planned on h7 as well. Okay, you can prepare yourself that queen h4 might happen, the rook might come across, there's knight e6, knight um, going to f7, but at the moment the, the knight on e5 is guarding that square. Okay, knight comes to g6. And there goes the knight to f7 because of the knight having moved away from the e5 square. King, H, king to g8. And why make that sacrifice? Once again, we see a brilliant sacrifice and a double pawn situation. Okay, from that position, Waylon, talk to me. Why did White make that sacrifice? <clears throat> what are our combinations going to be after that? He wants to bring his rook to the h file. The h file. Yes. So are you saying h g6 first? And then? Rook h4. Rook h4. And there's nothing that you can, that black can do to stop the checkmate. Okay. Thanks for that, Waylon. All right, are there any questions, guys, or any comments that you wish to make about what you're seeing so far? Okay, you saw that the knockout blow was queen takes g6, which decided the game on the spot. All right. Um, Let's just go to the next one and then we'll revisit those notes at the end. Okay, so now we are looking at combination. It's involving two, two files, a typical situation in which you see that white's own pawn on h7 is protecting the king. Okay, um, otherwise the black king would have been completely exposed. I want you to notice the rooks on the G and H1 files. Um, what is this, your suggestion for your first move going to be? Anybody? From this position, what is your suggested move? Kutswa? I'm having a deathly silence here. <laughs> yes. I think I think 
It's better to play forced moves like Rook G8 check. Okay, but then you give yes. me Rook to pawn. All right, I hear you. Yes. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe go uh, like Queen G3, threatening Queen G8, and then Rook Queen G3. G3. Okay, grind. Very good. That was the move that I was thinking of. Queen G3. Threatening Queen G8. Okay. All right. So Queen G3 was played. Queen G8 threat was extremely strong. Okay. So he had to he had to stop that. So that's Queen G6 played. When you under when you're busy attacking, do not exchange your most attacking pieces. All right, so now with queen h4, if the queen moves away on g6, certainly rook g8 is now definitely on the cards, All right? So let's see what black did, queen f5, and there you go. Rook g8 has to exchange, king takes, and queen g8 checkmate. All right, is it an easy game? <laughs> If you look at these positions and finding your, 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 your right move, the right move to kickstart your combination, certainly it will then be an easy game. Okay. All right. Let's look at, let's look at another one. Um, I just want to see if I, I'm not sure if I skipped this game. Okay, let's go to the next one. Okay, so we, so we once again looking at combinations involving two files. And yeah, for this position for white, um, I almost wanted to ask my friend Burton because Burton sat in on this presentation a few weeks ago. Burton, do you remember this move, the first move for white? Um, no, Andrew. Um, yeah, I've, I've been listening here with a uh, with half ear. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So we're busy with we're busy with with two files. Um, Waylon, give me the first move. I was thinking of um, Rook F6. Correct. That is the move. It is the sacrifice. And what's going to happen if he, if he takes? If G takes uh, F6, it's going to be Queen X8-6 checkmate, yeah. right? All right, so definitely cannot take. So the knight goes to g5. Must white now suddenly now run away because his rook is going to be captured and the knight is now blocking the g6 square? Or do we make an exchange sacrifice? Exchange. All right. Yeah, rook takes g5. Rook takes g5. F takes, h takes g5. Queen takes. And there's still now the G the G F6 threat, but then F takes G6, and then you're looking at the checkmate also. You got the bishop on D3 that is uh, attacking H7. So even after that, then uh, after F takes G6, the queen can immediately check on H6. Okay, so the king comes back to G8. And Queen h4, easy game. Still that possibility of f takes g6 threat. Black is now really desperate wanting to, to get into the game. And now we see that white comes back. And now the threat is a discovered attack. All right? Discovered attack, bishop h7. Okay, I'm just moving a bit faster, guys, because of time. So you can actually see that uh, that black's 
uh, queen is being threatened. So now g6 is played. Must black leave it like that? Or must black still take the pawn on g6? Waylon? Take the pawn, sir. Yep. There is a discovery attack on the queen, and now queen h7 is still being threatened. Let's go and check him first there. King goes there and takes the queen. And now you can actually see if the if f takes on g6, one of the two rooks is about to be lost. Okay. All right, so once again, that's two files involved. Let's go to the second last game. Okay, so here again, we're looking at combination involving two files. This and the next game is, is exactly the same. Who shall we say is better off, white or black? Right. Who's better off, white or black? I think white is better. Okay, thank you, Takutsa. Um, and I think you guys can actually see the, the huge threat here. Black king and queen, they are both in the same file. It's actually an open file, although there's a knight on g7. All right, so you can actually see the huge threat of rook g2 coming in or rook to g1. Okay. So let's look at White's first move, bishop to e8. Okay, <clears throat> there's a discovered, uh, um, discovered, uh, not a discovered attack, there's a double threat there, double attack. Waylon, talk to me about the double attack. If knight takes, then rook g2, and White is threatening queen takes h2 and bishop takes h bishop takes a4. Okay, so white threatening a4 and queen takes h7, you mean? Yeah, okay, great stuff. So if the, the knight can take there um, on, on e8, but then there is also the additional threat, Waylon, of the skewer the rook on g2 or on h2, and then you're getting black screen. Right? So let's see what happened. The knight did take, and there goes rook to g2. Certainly queen, queen for the rook and the bishop won't be too bad. But there's no rush to take the queen, so there's a doubling up of the rooks now for white. So it's queen once again for the rook and the bishop. Eight points for nine points, but it's not going to help because there is your, there's still a strong attack going. Queen um, attacking on h8 there, king trying to find some shelter on d7. And with rook to g7, he has to give up. There's not much to, not much that he can do there now. Okay. Um, <clears throat> it's just a matter of time. Okay. Let's just go to the last one, guys. Again, uh, combination and and the reason why I said he has to give up with it, just, just coming back to that last position here, look at those two rooks on the queen side. They once again off center. Okay, they're on the wrong side of the board. There's not much attack that they can actually do. And they are actually limited in terms of the movement. They cannot really operate vertically, but they, except for the rook on the fifth rank, that will have to swing across, but there's not much activity there. Okay, you can actually see queen is going to go to f8 next, e7 pawn is going to fall, after which the b7 pawn will fall and so forth. <clears throat> and it is going to lead to checkmate. All right.
the next one <clears throat> white to play once again very similar to the position that we had earlier with a rook on g1 and h1 knight is uh, knight on f7 it's now hoping to drive the queen away but white does not retreat completely when there's a sacrifice involved guys it's a question of calculating the sacrifice working it out carefully is it going to work what are the possible combinations so now white starts off by giving off his queen for a pawn okay but i want you to see the compensation that he gets in terms of material all right so it's a queen for two pawns but all of a sudden you're having this knight that is hanging here. And there's nothing that black can do to save the knight. Okay. And let's see how it, how he finishes it off. So now it's, it's nine points for five points. The other knight is also hanging. Not much you can do. And there you go. It's eight points now. Two knights and two pawns for the, for the rook. But that's, that's not the end of it. You've got the doubling up of the rooks, and then you're going to actually end up having a threat of skewering the queen. Okay, king goes to g7. The Kutsa, next move for, for white. <laughs> Rook. H7, check. Can you? Is it going to be wise for uh, the king to go to? Hmm? If king F6, is it going to be a good move? Good idea? No. Okay. Because, because rook wise. H6. Rook h6, yes, and white will also just block the exit here by playing f4. Okay, so he has to end up going back, and now there goes the black queen. Okay. And there's still that check also of the exchange, and now the bishop on e2 is also going to be activated. Exchange is there. And the next move for white is the killer blow. There goes the last rook also. Okay, so now you got, <clears throat> they appear to be equal. A rook for the knight and the bishop, but in terms of material, um, white has now certainly got his, his fast pawns going. Um, the b5 pawn is going to, going to fall, and black has only got one rook against two very active pieces. King is going to come in and so forth, and um, it's just a matter of time. Okay, so there certainly there is a winning ending. All right, so let's just, let's just go back, guys, to, to my initial notes that I referred to. When we looked at combinations invol involving files, certainly we saw the need for rooks to have open files to be effective and the activity involved there. Did we see penetration of the seventh or the eighth rank? I would say yes. And we saw also that the open or semi-open file leading towards a castle position can become a decisive factor. We even saw a sacrifice or two happening. We even saw more than one queen sacrifice happening. Um, we saw weaknesses being provoked, more than one weakness is being provoked, and certainly there was a direct attack on the positions. All right. Um, often we tend to we tend to underestimate the value of our pieces. We, we just want to rely upon that queen. And when that queen is off the board, and then we want to, then we want to give up because we've somehow feeling lost. 
you must not underestimate the value of the, of the or the power of the rook of the bishop and so forth and certainly there's still a lot of power left for them to to force that final knockout blow and if your opponent's pieces are, are not active if they're not part of the game if they're on the wrong side of the board you can actually discount them and you can level the playing fields and while you are on the attack your opponent certainly has to be on the defense for most of the game. All right. Are there any comments or questions from your side relating to tonight's topic? None. All right. So I thank you guys very much. For your attendance tonight and i hope that that you certainly would benefit from the teachings tonight thank you thank you burton thank you michael and thank you everybody have a good evening further thank you very much andrew hope you guys enjoyed it yeah thank you andrew and um guys the um online qualifier for the western province open the second qualifier um the brochure has been published um that event will take place next week saturday it's going to be on um, Tornello. So I don't know who you guys have played on Tornello, but um, it's quite, quite, quite straightforward. Um, uh, similar, I'm going to say similar to Leeches, although there's a, there's a slight difference in the way that you sign up for it. Um, but it is um, a free event for all uh, Western Province uh, players. So um, yeah, I encourage you guys to, to register for that event. Um, the top uh, 10 players from the from this championship section and the top 20 players from the open section will qualify to play in the Western Province Open over the board tournament, which will take place in, I think it's 8th and 9th of May. Um, yeah. That's it. Thanks, eh? All right. Thanks very much, guys. Good night. Thank you, guys.